All right, this is the part of the lab where you actually have to do some of the work. So you will need the intro to the lab. You can view it uh, as an online document or you can print it out. There are a couple of things I wanna point out in the lab itself. So it has an introduction, which you'll need for the study guide questions, but let's flip over to what we're really gonna to use today. And it, it has a really nice description of original horizontality and cross-cutting relationships and the law of superposition and, and all of these things and angular unconformities and non-conformities and disconformities, which will help you with the um, study guide. But what we will need today in lab is this equation. So you're gonna need this equation. I'll give you the numbers but then you'll have to plug into that particular equation. Once you get the number, you will need this rather sad looking table because we wanna know what era and what period did a particular geologic event occur in. And so we have like the Cenozoic era, the Quaternary and the Tertiary periods are divided by this 1.60 million years dividing line. So any number smaller than 1.60 million years would be in the Quaternary period. If it's bigger than 1.60 million years, but less than 66 million years, it would be in the Cenozoic era and the Tertiary period. And I will tell you now, your answer is gonna be one or the other. So you need to keep the table handy and the equation handy. So now that we have done that, we're gonna switch and pick up with the other document. So you will need this part. You, again, you maybe don't have to print it out. I think it would be easier if you did. You could just view it virtually and then write the answers down. You will notice that there are four questions on this first page and each one has some sort of a hint or a note. Use that to your advantage. So in our drawing, we have three kinds of rock. We have this uh, blue foliated metamorphic, we have the red granite and we have the black basalt and they all three do different things. So you'll be able to answer questions one and two and three associated with that. Once you do that, question four tells you to come down here and put the oldest rock on the bottom and the youngest on the top and the middle-aged rock in the middle. So the oldest one will be the country rock. It'll be the rock that everything else intruded into. And again, you want to Remember that young things cut across older things and that country rock cannot make dikes. All right, after you finish the first page, we'll look at this second one. It's got more things to it. So this is going to require a separate piece of paper. If you printed it out, you can use the back of this previous sheet, or you can just use a piece of notebook paper because we're going to list the rocks and do the math for this section. So the first thing it tells you to do is to take these seven kinds of rock and make the start of your geologic column. So we have the seven rocks listed up here, all right, and they're color coded and here's our drawing. And so you want to start and work your way down, probably starting on at the B in basalt and coming down would be the way to go. So obviously at the top of your list is this orange rock, which is Arcos. And then it's followed by this green rock, which is conglomerate. And then you go all the way down until you end up with dolomite as the last rock. So you want this on your a piece of paper, not over here in this column, but on a piece of paper. So once you have the rocks listed, the next step says, insert the unconformities. Well, we've got one, two, three of them. <clears throat> so you'll draw a little arrow out to the side and write unconformity, just like we did in the previous video. And then let's do the basalt dike. So you have the basalt dike, it cuts through 
And you want to remember that whatever rock it cuts into has to be there. So the basalt dipe will be on our list above that on the list, closer to the top of the page. And remember, if you have two things happening at the same time and one of them is an unconformity, the unconformity is higher up. And that gets us to the dyke stock sill combo. So this big white blob happened all at one time. We're going to ignore the sill spot part of it. We'll ignore the stock part of it and care about the two dikes. So you use those dikes to determine what rock was in place so the dikes could cut into it. And that means the dike stock sill combo comes just above that in the listing of the rocks. <clears throat> We're almost finished. You have a tilt. So if you look in the lower right hand corner, you need to decide did only the dolomite tilt or did only the siltstone tilt or did both the dolomite and the siltstone tilt. Whatever you conclude, you want to include again an arrow out to the side and the word tilt in that rough drawing <clears throat> or rough draft in order to then create the geologic column. The last thing we need to add is the alluvium. It didn't get a color, it's not a rock. Alluvium is the material that a river dumps when it overflows its banks. And in this cross section, alluvium is the very newest thing. It hasn't turned into a rock yet. So alluvium will be the very tippy top thing on your listing. It's gonna be number 14 at the very top. And then everything else is going to come below that. The very last thing in your listing will be dolomite. So you need to take your rough draft, that listing of rocks with the arrows showing the unconformities and the tilt and the basalt dike and the dike sill stock combo. You want to take that and work down from the top and insert the rock layers where they belong. So once you have that done, you have finished number three. You've done the geologic column. To do number four, it's the calculation. So you write down the equation that I showed you in the intro to the lab. And instead of D divided by P, you'll have one divided by 820. And instead of K, you'll have 1300. Zero, zero. Do not take the word million and turn it into zeros. Leave it as 1300 zero, zero, and we'll have million years as our units on the answer. So when you take those two numbers, the one divided by 820 and the 1300 zero, zero, and do the math, you should have a number between five and zero and the units it's measured in are million years. And you'll want to show me your work. You can do it on the same page you did the rough draft because I'll have to see that too. Once you've got the number, you go back to that table I talked about and decide which era and which period the dike intruded and write them down for me. Be sure to specify the word era and the name and then period and the name. And once you've done that, you're finished. The lab is over. I will stop the share and stop the record.